Hello, my name is Jody Ann Johnson and I'm the CEO of Action Coach Business Coaching here in Miami and your host for Business Spotlight Miami where we focus on the businesses that make Miami great. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing Douglas Fajardo of Zenial Digital. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yeah, you did Okay, great. good. Welcome, Douglas. Thank Give you. us a description of your business. I, I was intrigued by what you do. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, so for the last, uh, we launched Xenial Digital five years ago. Actually, our birthday is going to be on March 1st, our fifth birthday. Uh, we were part of a global company before that, and our focus, uh, since we split from, from that global company, has been on basically how do we develop virtual reality and augmented reality enterprise solutions that transform both learning and training. Uh, and that's really the focus uh, as we have uh, grown uh, in this journey. We've seen certain areas that we can discuss a little bit farther in our conversation where we're seeing more adoption in industries like aviation and healthcare. Uh, so, but that's really what we do. We develop virtual reality and augmented reality enterprise solutions for our, our partner clients. So say a little bit more about enterprise solutions. I know when you speak to aviation and healthcare and then training, you know, I can see the applications for that. Uh, can you just say, is that like a large, like a Delta or um, some large healthcare system or a nursing school? What What do you mean by that? So I'll, I'll focus on, on each separately. So on the healthcare side, we're mostly working right now with the schools of medicine uh, because most of these schools, uh, it takes quite a bit of, of an investment to build physical simulation labs to actually train nurses, to train uh, you know, medical professionals, right? It, some of these uh, sim, sim labs cost millions of dollars to build. You basically have to replicate an operating room right. with uh, mannequins that are super expensive and so on. So what we're building is actually a virtual reality replica of that, where the nurses, for example, to give a very specific example, learn how to use anesthesia equipment, learn how to anesthetize a virtual patient inside of these environments, and then they're able to practice at home uh, without having to have access to a physical simulation lab. Wow. So it's, yeah, so it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty um, interesting also from an, a scalability perspective, a lot of these universities, because of the limitations that physical space has, they cannot take on new students, right? Because right. the students have to be there and accumulate hours in the same labs. Now with this virtual reality simulation labs, they can actually accumulate those lab hours at home without having to be in the physical space. So that's an interesting point of view where they by themselves can do these procedures and train and practice at home. The other interesting piece about this specific use case is that we have the capability in real time to also bring faculty and the students together. Oh my of, goodness. <laughs> yeah, inside of this virtual reality environment. So for example, what they would do in terms of supervising students if they're doing all the procedures on a mannequin in a physical lab, they can do the same thing as avatars inside of this virtual reality environment. Do, do you find, and in, in, in I'm sure like with the research and the application of it, that, that this has been explored, that it's as effective or some high percentage of effectiveness as it is in a simulated lab with mannequins in a physical space? Yeah, so so on on the specific use case of healthcare, um, I don't have yet a research study in terms of that. But PwC actually uh, did a ten month uh, research study around the impact of virtual reality in training, and uh, the results were off the charts. You know, people were learning four times faster in virtual oh, wow. reality in virtual reality than in uh, traditional environments. Uh, they retain three times more knowledge than they did with physical because, you know, we're totally focused when we have a headset, right, on what we're doing, plus the fact that we can continuously repeat and repeat and repeat the task, yeah. Yeah. it creates memory muscle, right? So 
when you go to an assessment, you're better prepared by, by having done this multiple times instead of just getting half hour whenever right. in the simulation lab. So the results of the research studies that we've seen so far have been outstanding from, from a knowledge retention perspective. So fascinating. Can you tell us what drove you to start the business in the first place? Yeah, I, I think I, so in the, in the, when we were part of the global group previously, uh, we developed a lot of capabilities doing digital transformation for training and learning uh, organizations within companies and within universities. So a couple of examples are uh, like with universities, instead of them uh, looking at books and I'm talking, you know, eight, 10 years ago, maybe, right? When the iPad came out, we started looking at how we could create more engaging content uh, through videos, through interactive experiences on mobile devices. So we developed a, a very strong capability when it came to learning and, and developing training and learning uh, methodologies through these more interactive experiences. And then when we saw augmented reality and virtual reality, kind of like the devices be more mature start, yeah. uh, you know, enabling us to actually build what we had envisioned we could build, which is basically replicate in, in a virtual environment what we do <laughs> in real life. We're like, we have to go in there because see, it was just a natural progression for us to go to go into VR and AR. And that's why we decided to move to, to it. Well, it's funny because Simon Sinek says, that people don't care what you do or how you do it. They care why you do it. So why do you do what you do? Why do you yeah, do what you do, Douglas? I, I think one of the things is, and, and, and I love that you mentioned him because I actually, um, I actually gave about, I don't know, I want to say about 12 to 16 different sessions about uh, digital transformation. And one of the major parts of that, uh, of those training sessions that I did for a global company were, were based on Simon Sinek's, you know, why, how, and why. And, and, uh, and I, think, I think it comes to the essence of, you know, I, 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 I come from Guatemala, right? And, and then there was that, was, that was where I was born. I came here in my, in my, in my, in my mid-teens, but even though education was far more advanced than it was in Guatemala, we, we still had the traditional one to many. We have an instructor in front of the classroom and everybody just listening and you know, and not, not all of us learn the same way, right? And yeah. and, and and I think and that come, the, the and the reason why I'm mentioning this is because that's what leads to the why. I think the why I have a passion for creating better ways for people to learn something, right? And then, because when I see, I have two kids, I have, uh, uh, my son is 22, my daughter is 21, they're about to finish their, their college careers. And, but I, I, I see them grow up. I also have a niece that's 13 years old and they're such digital beings, right? They, yes. they, learn, they learn by watching YouTube, by watch, by interacting in Instagram, uh, TikTok, and all of these social media pieces, but where they collaborate, where they learn, where they learn about financial transactions and trading and things like, it's in games. They, they go to Fortnite, they go to, to Roblox, they go to all these different gaming platforms. So why not create a more engaging gamified way of learning where these kids feel more that there is uh, an actual, I guess, an, an actual connection to how they 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 engage in their in their lives outside of school, and have the same kind of engaging experience in learning, and that's really the why. I just I just I, I just think that when we look at the workforces of the future, it's these kids, right? And they don't want to go out there and and, and 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 have a PDF or a manual handed to them because they don't know what to do with it, they get, <laughs> right? They got yeah. very short attention span. So they get bored in a second if you give them something to read or to do. But if you put them on a VR headset and they start learning how to, you know, dissect a pig, how to, uh, I don't know, how to do chemistry experiments, right? In, 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 a, in a gamified virtual reality environment it's a lot more fun for them to learn. So that's really the why is the passion to actually provide that, those future professionals 
a better way of learning. You know, I'm laughing because um, we know that Peter Diamandis is a futurist and you're a member of the Singularity University chapter in Miami. And I'm thinking you're probably a futurist too. I appreciate <laughs> and, it. Uh, and, um, you know, and somebody who's very passionate about teaching and learning. So that's amazing. All right. During the pandemic, there were a lot of challenges and opportunities. What were some of those challenges and opportunities for your business and how is it impacting it post pandemic? Yeah, I think we had more challenges than opportunities to tell you the truth because most of the um, entities that we were working with right before the pandemic hit were universities, uh, cruise companies, one of our biggest clients is Celebrity Cruises and also retail companies. We're doing quite a bit of business with Tiffany and company and, and, uh, and, oh Sotheby, and Sotheby's. And you saw all of those industries crash, right? Uh, yep. Education, the higher, higher education, they didn't know what to do. Uh, cruise companies couldn't cruise for a year and a half yeah. almost. Yep. And, and then retail companies, everything closed, right? All the malls were closed. Everything was closed. There was no, no contact, right? So it really presented a huge challenge where, 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 you know, as a startup, you know, you, you, you're wow. always being so careful with your cash flow, and you are kind of like figuring out how you, you extend your runway more and more, more and more yeah. until you create stability and go on. So I think that was the biggest challenge. It was managing finances without letting one of our employees go because wow. we were, I was so conscious about the impact of during this massive crisis, and then all of a sudden you don't have an income or healthcare even to take care of your family if you got sick. So it was a it was a it was a lesson uh, of humanity, a lesson of resiliency, and a and a financial lesson on how to scrap, be so scrappy to you know yeah. do whatever it took to 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 make the company even survive at that point. But yeah. I think I think. It was kind of interesting, but out of all of that also, of course, there was a transformation in learning where you needed people, you know, the students couldn't go to labs, right? The students couldn't, uh, you know, people, you know, couldn't experience a cruise or anything like that. So what well, we say, well, why don't we create virtual reality experience, virtual reality labs that actually now are going to be your, you know, your, 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 your plan B, if this happens again, or, or the new normal, right, that we're all living right. in, which is all, a lot of students now are taking classes online, people are working from home. So, you know, you, you have to give them training, even when they're there. Right? Yes. And then so that created an opportunity. So I, we started to see the, 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 at least new projects coming in the last quarter of 2020, 2021, we had a really solid year of just stabilization. 2022 was the same, even though second half of 2022 was a little bit challenging because, because of all this economic uncertainty. Right. A lot of companies kind of held off on investments, but it was so crazy from November until now, we're seeing just that deluge of opportunities coming out of, <laughs> coming out of everywhere. And I, I just think that people have drunk the Kool-Aid that, you know, these you know, metaverse concept like virtual reality, augmented reality, and the metaverse includes a bunch of other emerging technologies, right? Artificial intelligence, cloud computing, 5G, right. and, and on and on. But I think people know that this is the way in which people are going to want to experience work, learning, meeting, and things like that in these environments uh, where, you know, that basically have no limits, right? And, and I think that's what's so exciting for us it's about how we can really imagine uh, creating spaces where people just, you know, are inspired inside of these virtual reality spaces that sometimes don't even exist, right? And that's yeah. that's why we're so passionate about what we're doing. The you mentioned um, your team and not not laying anybody off. So well done, congratulations! You. you know, we were able to maintain our team too, even though it was quite something. Right? Congratulations to you too. Kind of, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, how many people work for you? So now we're 34. At that point, I think we were 22. So we've grown another 12 people. We're still a small company. Mm -hmm. I think this is a, a growing industry, but also one of the things that we've been able to assemble is a high quality team that's able to uh, build reusable uh, 
software, let's call uh -huh. it that way, uh -huh. that allows us to now do more with less and accelerate time to market for our clients as well. So oh, we're trying great. to, yeah, we're trying to be super smart about how we grow, but we're also being even smarter about how we build uh, the solutions that we're building and how we can reuse things to be able to, to deliver faster, better, higher quality and, and continue to grow anyway. I mean, our goal is to, in the next year and a half to two years to be, you know, at least a hundred to 150 person company. So we have wow. a lot of ambitions in terms of growth. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So you had mentioned a couple of your clients that you had before the pandemic. Who's an ideal client for you today? Uh, um, right now, because of our focus, there is two ideal clients. Um, so before I answer that question, I'll tell you, uh, I, I, I want to preface it with the fact that we're actually going through a little bit of a transition. So we're a hybrid company that's creating products while we're still building custom solutions for some clients, right? And okay. the reason why is because as a startup, what you want to do is you want to be a scalable company that investors bring you in and we can grow the company to what we feel it is. So by creating products, then we are able to resell that product to many right. clients, right? Right. Uh, but custom solutions are interesting because we're seeing large enterprises coming in with nice uh, ticket sizes, let's call it that right. way. Yeah. Uh, that makes it interesting for us to build like really, really great, uh, you know, enterprise solutions for our clients. So our ideal client right now, it's a university, a school of medicine because they are looking for virtual reality to train nurses, to train first responders, EMS, and yeah. all these medical professionals, a school of engineering. So for example, some of the opportunities that we have right now, it's around recreating even like, like large 3D printers that cost $250,000. They can only have one. Now we can, we can, they can have, each student can have their own 3D printer in their, in their VR headset, right? So. Uh, schools of engineering are perfect for us, uh, and then, and then, uh, and then on the corporate side, um, uh, companies like uh, like aviation companies are the ones that we're winning. Uh, large companies that uh, do maintenance, repair, and operations oh, wow. for aircraft, because we're now basically building, you know, I, I we're building bombardiers, Gulf Streams, Boeing, and large aircraft. No, I, I can see like the, yeah. the scale of built, like, so your company is allowing all of these other entities that you've mentioned to scale astronomically, if that's their business model. Cool. And it provides the, the training that used to take so much longer because they had to have time, as you said, in the lab and they had to build it and like that you've just taken and kind of collapsed time. And yeah. being able to have people be um, efficient and effective faster. That and also, so for example, if you go to the other side, which is the other area of focus for us, which is aviation, right? So think about a mechanic that's working on a $70 million aircraft. You want that mechanic to really know what they're doing. Right? You don't <laughs> want some guy to come and mess up the landing gear of a $70 million aircraft or anything like that. So the risk of putting somebody there that maybe hasn't gone through a million times of training before they go and change that landing gear, it's so important, right? And that's in, in VR, we can do that. We can have that engineer go and do it time and time again. And not only that, the reason why I mentioned we're an enterprise company, an enterprise solutions company, is because we have a, a full analytics platform underneath this virtual reality and augmented reality solutions that we build and we can capture every single interaction oh, somebody's wow. doing whether they picked up the right tool if they turned it uh, you know as many times as they needed to if they took the screw in the right oh my goodness. step and so on so all of that gives the instructors or the trainers all of that data to say Douglas is missing these specific things so we gotta train him on this because this can cost us you know whatever right. so it's about risk it's about scalability and it's about creating more efficient, better trained workers. And that's the way right. we see it, yeah. <laughs> it's so fascinating. Thanks. I love that I'm getting the interview and, and in particular your passion about it. I appreciate Tell that. me what's the most significant learning you have had since you started the business personally? 
I think I think resiliency, like I said, I, I think it's just, you know, I I I I take I take that to heart. Just it was just so it, it's just it's, it's not easy to be an entrepreneur, you know. And then as you grow the company, and, and I know you guys as uh, as part of action coach yourselves are, are kind of like act as entrepreneur with the experience that I had. And 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 then as you start growing the team. You know, there's a lot of families that start depending basically on you because at the end of the day, as the founder and CEO of the company, I have to have a vision for the company. I have to create the right partnerships for the company. I have to bring in the right executives, the right investors to help me get to a vision, right? And, and I cannot be the only one doing this because I, I don't, I, I don't want to be the one that says, you know, I take 100% responsibility, but I want to have other people that have to to help me to bounce ideas off of, to guide me, and uh, and and so all of that puts a lot of pressure. Aside from the fact that we gotta be covering a 34 person, uh, you know, uh, uh, payroll every month, right, right. That's, that uh, that yeah, it's getting bigger and bigger. But uh, but I think I think the way in which we are focusing the company, uh, the kind of clients that are trusting us with building this these incredible new things for them and sometimes they're taking a chance on us uh even though they do their rfps and their due oh, yeah, diligence yeah. they're still taking a chance because they're innovating but they're they, you know and 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 that's what i think it's 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 so it, it's so important and i think so to go back to that answer is i think being resilient to be able to be able to drive this company to where I think my entire team, because this is like my family, uh, sees that we can go. That's that's the one thing that's I think the most important learning I had in this in this in these few years uh, since we launched uh, Xenium. Yeah. Right. So let me ask you, is there anything as we wrap up this interview that you'd like to share? Anything else? I I, I think you know, I want, I will, I guess what I would like to share is, you know, for anyone that's listening, I think you, you know, whether you're a co a, an enterprise person, a person that's as in school, a faculty at a university, a thing at a university, to really look into these technologies, uh, you know, as, as a whole, and how they are transforming things, you know, uh, like I said, it's not just virtually what we do, but it's also all this incredible revolution that's going on with artificial intelligence, with all these things that are, you know, I thinking faster, are thinking really like, you know, they're, they're really, they're really maturing at a pace that I think everybody's going crazy, right? Uh, you know, I, I'm pretty sure you, you've heard of chat GPT. I think it reached- Of course, in two, yeah. In, in, two month, in two months, it's reached a hundred million users. I mean- I know, and, I know. And then, so, all of these technologies are going to converge into what everybody envisions as the metaverse, which is uh, the internet in 3D, basically. We're going to be immersed in these <laughs> worlds all together, being able, like we do now with the internet, with the 2D internet, that's, that's what really the vision of the, of the metaverse is. And, and, I, and, I, and, and so I, I just think that, you know, if you are faculty, if you're a university or some kind of teaching institution, I think you know, do you have a responsibility to not be left behind and not leave behind your, your students? Because those people are the ones that everybody's going to need in the future to, you know, continue to build this, this, this thing that just the, the train has left the station. I mean, it's yeah. as simple as that, right? So I think it's that. And then, and I, I think companies also, the companies that uh, really understand how to bring these technologies into their ecosystems and how they bring value and understand where strategically they add value, uh, you know, those are the ones that are going to thrive, right? And uh, and I think you're seeing that. I mean, it's it's um, it's kind of like interesting how in some areas of technology, things are exploding. And then we're also seeing a lot of people, unfortunately, be laid off from tech companies right now, from the biggest ones in the world, right? Google, the Facebook, uh, Meta, et cetera. Amazon, but I, I I think all of all of those people are also come from this technology background where you know they they can use all that knowledge to go and impact yeah. the, the areas that are growing. So I would just say that I, I would just say that you know it's important. Well, what I heard is embrace it. 
yeah. like you said, the train has left the station. So, um, and, you know, and we've definitely gotten to the place where in the, they talk about crossing the chasm where you're, you're beyond early adopters. And now you're starting to go up that kind of, uh, curve there and, um, and not to be left behind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Embrace it. Embrace it's it fun. is the key word. And and keep up. Yeah, <laughs> keep up. yeah right. you have to. All right, great. So, Douglas, thank you. Thank you for this interview, for your passion, thank and you. for the difference that you're making, not only in your company and with the people that work with you, but also your clients and our community. And uh, with that, we'll wrap up with thank you. Business Spotlight Miami where we focus on the business owners that are making a difference in Miami. Thank you so much, Douglas. Thank you, Jody. I really enjoyed it. Me too.